Welcome to the last episode of The Extraordinary Gentleman. But the first episode of the Whiskey House Pup... You... This is the first episode of our podcast, and you have your ringtones oh, on still. Oh, boo <laughs> Oh no! Leave it to Carter. Leave it to Carter. But also, I mean, it doesn't make I can sense. Just go home. Be a last episode and a first episode. Like, can't do that. It is the first and the last. It's the omega and the alpha for whiskey. <laughs> can we drink now? What is happening? I already uh, did a shot of Yag, so I'm already ready. He's already ready. Just like, give me booze. I'm already sick of today. Q intro. Bim 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 <laughs> bim bim bim. bim. Bim, bim, ding, ding, ding. I'll never <laughs> mentally recover from this intro. So, like in the intro, we said, this is the last episode of The Extraordinary Gentleman. We are rebranding, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We are changing the name to the Whiskey House Pub House. We felt that it was needed to be changed for a more uh, whiskey theme. Yeah, more more accurate representation of what we actually talk about. Yep. Because we are neither gentle, nor extraordinary, nor extraordinary. At, at least as much as we'd like to be. It's true. We're really just... We're more of a guy's drinking whiskey. And that's it. <laughs> and other alcoholic house. beverages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so that's uh, that's that's kind of what... You'll probably see it um, maybe a few days after this episode airs, I guess, just so everyone kind of has a um, exposure to this episode. We give them a chance to kind of get a get a hold understand what the purpose was yeah, so all, all seven listeners yep all seven <laughs> it's actually gone up to eight now. oh my gosh dude we are in the big time it's mu- the multiplication it's just it, it has the growth growed exponentially yep in the past t- week and a half yeah i mean that's insane so thank you so much you guys for listening we're just such a a, a close-knit group yeah. <laughs> you know and we're so thankful that we finally made it Yep. So Thank we'll uh, we'll probably update the Instagram, and the logo will for the most part be the same, but it will change in wording. Yeah, just a different. So, but Can we play uh, the we'll... Big Time Rush song because we made it. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. The Big Time Rush. The uh 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. So has anything happened in the uh, last few weeks since we uh, had recorded? Anything like you guys want to talk lives. about? Well, whiskey related, maybe whiskey podcast related. related. You know, or honestly, just in general. Yeah, I just not too much has happened. I, I I haven't even gone to a liquor store since the last time we recorded until just this morning to get the ingredients yep, to this for this for this episode. Okay. Same. I, was, Same. I hadn't Same. bought well, anything new. Yeah, no. I uh, I feel like I've I've not narrowed down, but I have simply eliminated bottles that I owned mm-hmm. that I will never purchase again. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so like stuff. It wasn't necessarily a mistake. It's just... It's not your thing. It's just not going to be a drink that I will have on my shelf again. Like, yeah. Like what? Well, Rocknar. Rocknar's Rock-Nar. gone. Yeah. Rocknar's done. Which which Rocknar? The regular Rock-Nar one. Rocknar in general? The, or are you uh, saying specifically well, this one? Well, the one I knocked out was just the regular 100% rye. Okay. Um, or sorry, the not the 100%. It was the, like 90%. With the blue label, not the green label. Okay. So is that the? I have a is green that the finished label. one. Yeah. yeah, it's finished in in the cognac. cognac. Test. Yeah. Oh. But it's it's only I think it's ninety percent winter rye or something like Hazlitt winter rye, and then it's like and malted then, rye five yeah. percent. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. Because yours is a hundred percent Minnesota rye, the green label. Oh um, y- yes, and then mine's has a small percentage malted, right? As it as one does, right. And then mine was just not a hundred percent. It's mostly rye. Okay. Anyway. Okay. I'm not buying that again. Sorry. Right. Sorry to the Minnesota people. The community. The community for that. Far North spirits. It's... Wor- I would work on that a little more. I have a cast strength version from Super One of that. It's better, 
Still not that great. I didn't realize you had a cast strength one. Yeah, remember you, you told me about it. The it was it's a super one exclusive that they okay, and it's, it's like okay. I can't remember off the top of my head the percentage. It was like high fifties, low sixties, low sixties. Yeah, it's it like, it like sixty one. Made the breach. Okay. Yeah, and it is better, but not. It's just the same. It's the same flavors, but more of it. Mm-hmm. So, so that's one. Um, double rye. That's that's already been God. Uh the um wild turkey rare breed rye yep really well just because i've just decided the only rye i'm pretty much going to purchase from now on cast strength rye would be is well yeah cast strength but specifically will it straight yeah. rye okay. like that's just so good right it, it hits every every note of the rye that i want in that price point mm. um so that i'm just gonna have that probably and then if i see a kentucky owl rye i'll probably pick one up mm-hmm or maybe maybe in a little bit because it's like 180 bucks i think depending on what you get yeah yeah, what, yeah. yeah which one you get where you get it because i think the batch four is in the 200 range right for the rye or mm-hmm. for the batch batch four which which is the last uh supposedly the last um expression oh okay that. i thought that was just for the just kentucky the the bourbon one no the rye is discontinued well supposedly batch four is the last rye okay the the bourbon supposedly there's nobody said anything that about discontinuing that okay okay then so uh i think the significance of that was um the master blender that was behind that uh dixon deadman Mm -hmm. has um is no longer part of that company um of his own choice Mm -hmm. um because he's got other business ventures that he is uh producing or um Pre, well, up to that point, he was already in charge. He's got like a um, a hotel bar thing okay. that his family ran for the longest time. So, before prior to the, his uh, part into the Kentucky Owl, because the Kentucky Owl was his grandfather's uh, business, then Prohibition, I believe, happened, and then that's why they were that was removed, and then he brought it back because it was kind of a promise that his father made to his uh, grandfather. Mm-hmm. That he would bring it back, but so now it's the grandson that's bringing it back. The yeah, grandson brought it back. Yeah. Yep. But now he's I, I he he just opted out. I think. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yep. His choice. So. All right. But yeah, should we get a move on? Well, what about our, Carter? What, yeah. What are you we're killing? He he kind of said that he would hadn't done much, but yeah, I haven't done much. I can't really think of much <clears throat> uh, that I I haven't killed any bottles recently. Um, I haven't really added much to the collection either. It's, uh, I mean, I the only thing that I recently got was the Kings County that I was telling you about. It yep. was a gift uh, from a friend. And did he find that in New York State or no? He, I don't remember where he got it from, but it was in, it was in state here. Okay. Um, We'll probably be trying that on a later episode soon. Yes. Cool. Yes, we will cool. be trying that. that. Um, yeah, I can't think of much else. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> got a new bottle of uh, Buffalo Trace. That's about it. <laughs> cool. Cool. Always wonderful Buffalo Trace. Um, I'm boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> I found uh, uh, Zach and I were, were talking about the Elijah Craig barrel proofs, and I went and picked up two of the... The latest one, yeah, B five two one. Yep, just in in case the age statements were starting to disappear because the newer ones uh, supposedly eleven years, but who knows? But that one I had tried Zach's and that was always solid. But and then I did stumble across uh, a store pick of Four Roses, Cast Rank Four Roses. No, 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 no. For a very nice sixty five dollars, so I purchased mm-hmm. two of those and one for uh, Brooklyn, and uh, I'm sure we'll have that soon at some mm-hmm. point too. But that's kind of where I think all of us are. I, I almost killed my bottle of henry mckenna mm-hmm. and i got another one in reserve but yep. yeah I, I just <laughs> i'm in this similar i didn't have one in reserve so i didn't want to kill it but i just bought one another one okay um so now i could now i don't feel bad yeah. about yeah. killing the first you don't feel bad about leaving your yep. dad high and dry yeah it's always sad when you you like something so much you just don't have the heart you know like the like i have a a log 16 I can always I can always get another log sixteen. Yeah. I just 
I don't know, this bottle, like I just like don't want to kill it. So I always <laughs> buy a different scotch to kill or at least a, a different scotch to make progress on. So I got, you know, like our big Koi Reckon and then the Koi Reckon was almost gone. So then I bought a Wee Beastie <laughs> and then I still have a 10. So that, that's both of those are being drained. The, the, the Wee Beastie and the 10 are being slowly. drained slowly. Uh-huh. And when it came to the B5, I have a Elijah Craig B520 that I can't drink any more of because I, I only have enough now for like six glass like well six one ounce pours i have six ounces left so if we ever do we should probably do that soon right then, so if we do uh i'm not tempted to drink it i'm just saying like that one's pretty much done for me um so i had to go buy another one a different one you know yeah. so that's why i got the b5 yep. or the a a121 um which is okay and then i also have a b521 now as well so oh cool well that's good yeah, well, that's a good update. Good informing uh, listeners, kind of where we're at. So today, um, Zach's, you know, Zach, there's a reason why Zach's really, we're all kind of anxious about this one. This was a pretty sweet episode to, uh, that we have today. We are doing the tour around Isla, you could say. So before us, we have what we feel at least is the major expression from every major distillery on Isla currently producing product on the market. So we're going to kind of give a background story of each expression. Also, distilleries um, that are no longer functional and that have such closed down or are, as the term goes, mothballed. And the physical building exists, but they are no longer producing spirit uh, from that distillery. So any questions going forward, you guys? No? Mm -mm. I want to try... I'm excited because there's stuff I haven't tried in here. Yeah, me too. So I, what I'm going to do is there's a few distilleries that are discontinued. I think we'll talk about that first, and then we'll talk about the active ones. And then once we do that, we'll, we'll pour them, and then I'll do some uh, background history a little bit. I'm going to try to pronounce these. <laughs> I will not be able to. These are Scottish names. Yep. The Gaelic I'm, terms I'm are... I'm a very, very bad person on pronunciation. So... I mean, you said you said pretty much all these correctly before. Well, at least the, once. The, the ones that I've never at heard least of. Once. Yeah. <laughs> closed yeah, the since closed like ones. 1824. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No chance. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, uh, like we talked about, there are some lost distilleries in Isla. So there's five distilleries that are currently completely lost. Uh, there is one called Arden Still. So do you mean lost as in they don't know where the buildings are or that they have been destroyed? The buildings have <clears throat> either completely or partially been removed. Okay. So there are remnants of the building on varying degrees, um, but term lost means that they aren't functional and will never be functional, be functional again. of the original building, distillery and hall. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So... The first one, Ard, Ardnichtel, was founded in 1821. I'll, you know what? I'll, I'm going to go through them, and then I'm going to let Zach try to get a crack at them after we do the five. We'll see how we just, pronounce them differently. Because <laughs> Zach will do a better job. So. Ardnichtel. Yeah. So it was founded in 1821. It was next door to Lefroig and sharing its water source um, also with Lefroig and James, um, James and Andrew Stern. Uh, the noted Stern family of distillers was hired to manage the distillery and operate it and continued to with uh, some success until 1847. The distillery was then changed hands and none of the subsequent owners could keep it going. The final manager kept pigs in the nearby area of Texan, T-E-X-A, uh, and used to, the kin to smoke han. But it could, it was... Th- then they essentially lost it due to financial reasons and other, uh, other things. By uh, 1868, it was closed, and Lefroy uh, took it over the site and the distillery building next to the site of Lefroy's current warehouse and offices. So essentially, it kind of was merged into some of the buildings for Lefroy and stuff. So I think the gift shop is actually one of the old buildings from this distillery. Interesting. So that seems like a, it's not just, it's, it's not distasteful, move. but it's just, yeah, it's like a power move. <laughs> it's a power it's move. like, yeah, my art gift <laughs> shop is in your old distillery. Exactly. How do you feel about that? 
So the second one is Ardmore. I got this one. This one's pretty <laughs> Ardmore. Not to be confused with the Highland distillery of the same name. Ardmore was founded in 1817 and sat next to the uh, Log of Woolen. Uh, back in the same schedule, they were actually on the same bay. So by 1825, they both operated by John Johnston. And within 20 years, the two distilleries were sold and merged to f- uh, form the Log of Woolen distillery we know today. So that's kind of all the history that I so put it was up just on that one. Merged. Yeah, they, they merged essentially. So not I didn't look so deep in this as a summarization, but um didn't find any different like distinct notes or characteristics that one had versus the other. But uh number three is Dahl. Founded in eighteen fourteen. Uh it was a farm distillery owned by Mick Echern family. Uh and it had a number of buildings on the estate and uh could well have been used for distilling so it was kind of a a farm distillery is what supposedly it sounds like so not a huge so yeah small small and yeah not just sound probably like, every batch was a not just a small batch but yeah. probably a small small batch <laughs> exactly so uh, i didn't find anything on like kind of what happened and just kind of seems to have faded out and uh maybe wasn't the primary function of that area so number four latched and all slash Port Charlotte. Um, established in 1829, Lodged it All was a purpose-built site in the middle of the village of Port Charlotte. It uh, was located in the rain ends of Isla, the western peninsula where Berkeley and Kiloman are based today. It passed through many hands during its 100 years of operation. Then in the 1920s, its owners, uh, it was acquired by the Distillers Company Limited. And the distillery was dismantled and eventually closed in 1929. The main buildings are now the site of the uh, Isle Youth uh, Hotel and local garage. And the warehouse uh, are used nearby by uh, the Bricolati. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So now the last one. Oh, excuse me. Oh, oh there's, there's more than five. There's a whole other page. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I did this. <laughs> It's, but I, I did this a few weeks ago. Yep. Um, so Lost It uh, Distillery was established in 1826 at uh, Lost It's uh, Kenneth uh, near uh, Bay Grant, just between the roads of Berkshire and Port uh, Askeg. It operated in a farm distillery until the 1960s, at which point it closed. And uh, while it lost, the distillery's warehouse were uh, used until 1867, Today, uh, only the house and kennels remain. Number six is Malt Mill. The most legendary and famed of closed Isla distilleries, Malt Mill has also been one of the uh, simplest stories. When this one, I, I like this one. This one's actually cool. So the Log of Woolen owner, Patrick Mitchell, lost this uh, sales agency for Lafroig's whiskey in 1907. He decided to make his own Lafroig. So he built a smaller distillery. He tried to base it off of Lafroig. However, he failed. And it was not the same. Mm-hmm. How, however, it just survived until the uh, 1960s, at which point some of the equipment was removed and integrated to Log of Woolen. The malt mill building is now the visitor center. So that other story I said about Lafroig was actually meant the Log of Woolen. So, yeah, it's going to be tough to be the guy that helped make the look for like flavor you know mm-hmm. and then you go and try to make it again right and you can't <laughs> well yeah so i it was he was like a sales dude sales yeah. manager and stuff but like yeah yeah so he got the boot. He tries, and then he he tried to stick it to Lafroig. Yeah, and uh, very <laughs> how Scottish of him. In turn, <laughs> sticking it to himself. Exactly. Yeah. It's a failed business venture. It happens. So we're almost through. So we have Mulderie, established in 1826. Mulderie didn't last long. Built by the River Leg, a few miles from Bullmore. Closed in 1831. The owner went bankrupt and uh, immigrated to the United States amidst rumors that he enjoyed the distillery's whiskeys a little too much. <laughs> so it remains a site for a, a kind of a historical thing. But Newton. Newton was a farm distillery established in 1819, operated till. 1837, little known about the site. 
uh, that the house still exists and has a outbuilding with barred windows. So you can, you know, kind of still, it's a bonded storage essentially. So, uh, Octomore sat in the hills behind Port Charlotte. Octomore was a farm distillery built on the, uh, Bolton Grammy family established in 1816. Uh, didn't last long, fell in disrepair by the 1940s. Today, some of the, the buildings remain, um, and some of them are holiday co- cottages. Hmm. So, so Brook Cloudy didn't buy them though, or like didn't take any of their. It doesn't or, sound like they, it. they just named it. They just after. named it. I did limited research. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with Port Charlotte. Yeah. Ye- so, well, Port Charlotte's a different story. I'll, I'll get to that one too. That one, there's actually a third um, thing. It's kind of a middle thing, but middle thing. Middle thing. Uh, Starbus. Starbus was uh, settled near the present day. Scarbus Farm. Uh, it was the shortest lived of the distilleries on Isla. Established 1817, closed 1818. Ooh, Ooh that's rough. It's very little known, so okay. yeah. Um, the last one is Tallant, founded in 1821 by David and John Johnston. The distillery was built at the Tallner Farm near Balmore. Uh, not profitable, business folded in uh, 1852. However, part of it remains as a footnote on Isla's distillery in history. Also, the uh, the Johnson family also founded Lefroy, uh, Lefroy. So, hmm. yeah, kind of cool. So, that's the closed uh, list of distilleries on Isla. So, most of them, like the, uh, the most recent one was like 1940, essentially. Yeah, and like, everything has survived. Besides, from, until then. From that point on. No, well, those are all the... Those no, I'm gone. saying yeah. no, I'm ghosting. saying everything else that yeah, was going, for, going forward now in the podcast, right. these ones are gonna be yep. remaining. So well yeah. What I reference to Carter, sense. there's there's kind of a there's one that's not it's not operable, but it's not gone. And that is the Port Ellen yeah. distillery. So it was closed officially in nineteen eighty three, but it was founded in eighteen twenty five in the edge of the town with the same name. Uh, mothballed in 1930, was reopened in 67 after it was refurbished and expanded. Uh, was mainly used for blends and kind of still is. I think Johnny Walker actually has released a Port Ellen edition of the Blue. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, it this is actually where they currently malt a lot of the barley for the island. So this. I think we talked about it on one of our previous episodes. Um, Lafroy did an addition that they malted their own barley, but previously, uh, almost all the island sor- sourced their barley from this Port Ellen malting house. So, a few people and in- independent bottlers will source casks from this distillery still and release it, but those are highly um, praised and you know looked after and snatched up very quickly. But uh, it will dry up very soon, unless something is done about it. We need to go to Scotland. We gotta go go to there and buy everything that they have left. Yeah. So, and then remake it, or just drink it right right from the barrel. <laughs> just tap it. Tap just it. And... A, couple, so it... a couple ounces pours. There's every eleven day. distilleries that are closed. Yeah. Which is less than I would think. You know, I feel like I mean, Scott Isla is a small island, yep. and. and geographic comparison to the rest of scotland and you i don't know you think there'd be a lot of ambition more ambition throughout the 17 18 1900s if we ever do this sort of thing for the Campbelltown region um i don't know the exact number but there's a, there's a lot a lot of distilleries that were very very big in in the 20th century right before everything went to crap mm-hmm. <laughs> but that all closed down, and that was like three. So yep. that'll be a lot of closed facilities. But we're going to go to the open ones that uh, we can enjoy. So we're going to start with the uh, Ardbeg. Cork pop. Boom. This is 10, right? It's classic 10. Ardbeg 10 is the ambassador for the Ardbeg line. It is the starting point. They do have the Wee Beastie now, but the 10 is still kind of the true... That'd be my go-to. Yep. It is the uh, gatekeeper. It is, you know, the ambassador. So so I'll just read just kind of a quick thing about 
history on this one. Ardbeg. Opened in 1815. Uh, through the 80s, is operated only occasional until uh, 1997 when it was bought by the Glamorgy Company. So there was a period when this company, uh, Ardbeg, closed down um, through part of the 70s, and then it was reopened and had an occasional use through that time. But then in uh, 97, it was brought back up to a fully functional producing distillery by the Glenmorangie company. So are they still part of Glenmorangie or are they now their own? Glenmorangie is still the parent company. Okay. Yep. So now we're going to actually give some notes and stuff about the uh, whiskeys going forward because we have them. It smells like berries. I always get like an ashy, smoky, but like still a citrus mm-hmm. note, like an orange. Kind of smells like a burnt orange peel. Yeah. Name an image pop up of like a bonfire on the beach. I like bonfire to see something Ooh. on the beach. Yeah. Salty, but nice and smoky. It's palm and... tree on fire. Mm. <laughs> California's on fire. This is like the goldest. The goldest of their... It's so... The color is like that liquid gold oiliness. It's cool. It's still... On the taste, you still get that citrus for me. Obviously, it's under the smoke and brine of it, but that's the fruit I get. Kind of vanilla. Kind of vanilla, but mostly smoke. You gotta dig past the smoke. I mean, we've had we've had Arbor before. It's been yeah. on the show numerous times. Not much new to be said. No. Obviously, I gotta say though, I think that I've had. I mean, I've had this a lot now, and now I've had the five, the Wee Beastie a lot. They are different, but man, that Wee Beastie is really good. I like this over the Wee Beastie. Yeah, like, I'm not. I like the sherry that yeah. the Wee Beastie has, but this has more um, aggressive characteristics that I appreciate. Mm-hmm. It's punchier. This is punchier. The way Beastie's a lot punchier. Is it punchier? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, I think the, I I feel like it gets covered by the sherry finished. Yeah, yeah. No, this is not. This is way more subtle mm. than the way Beastie. Because way Beastie is like it's not as complex at all. It's only five years old. Mm-hmm. But the the way they peed it and smoked it, it's just tough, you know. And I love how it's it's. So I I, I guess I should say it's it, it's only good at one thing. And that's smoke yeah. and fire. And it's really good at that. Mm-hmm. And this is good at a lot of things. I just think the Wee Beastie is a better buy right now. Now yeah. that I've had them pretty pretty close to each other. I had Wee Beastie two nights ago. It, there's, a, there's a lot in this selection that we have that I would be totally okay with only having one of these. Right. Like one... From that distillery. Ah. Or even in general, just a scotch. Like, I, I would be content like if I could only have one scotch. Oh, so just buying one scotch for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with one with any of these, I think. Um, well, have you had? I, I have not had the Baumler, for sure right? one of these. Um, it's been a long time since I've had the Bunahaven 12. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I've had all of these in this lineup. But So you've had the Belmore? No. Oh. No, yeah, there's a... I should. We should say there are currently nine operable distilleries, fully functional. Uh, the second one that we have, actually, is Ardenho. It was officially opened in 2019. It's the newest distillery on Isla. They actually started first producing the whiskey in... Ninth, or, uh, excuse me, <laughs> 2018. It's a family-owned distillery. Uh, the father has actually has a lot of blending experience, mm-hmm. um, and he actually is was connected to the Black Bottling Company uh, that goes back in uh, 1948. So he's fairly got, got a number of years on his uh, <laughs> his belt for experience, but uh, they're no part of production anymore. So sad. But uh, the reason we don't have any is because scotch, to leave the country as scotch, it has to be a minimum of three years old. So it's 2018. Right now, it's only been three years. Right. 
Right. So, and who knows what their uh, quantity is going to be. So we don't really know how long it's going to take for any of those bottlings to reach uh, here for distribution. But probably a while. Yeah. yeah. Assume Plus, I don't even know if I, I mean, I, I guess I can't say, but a three-year-old scotch doesn't sound the most delightful thing to try. No, I mean, no. we've had five-year-old scotches. We have. We have. Yep. I think it, it'd be interesting just to have it because it's new. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the it, only reason. They were featured on a um, a documentary that's very recently because, I mean, they only opened in 2019. So, But they don't have anything they can sell there, obviously. But they kind of gave a little tour. And it's it's a very nice-looking distillery. It's right across the bay, I believe, from the uh, Kalila distillery. And they it's weird, but they can sell... Uh, different products of scotland in their gift shop that isn't their own it's funny just because of laws over there versus you know Mm -hmm. it's interesting but all right so the next one um we have balmore 12 so this is the one that i have not had it is i will if you guys want to start pouring actually sure oh you get a cork pop and then i'll i'll continue on this oh you pulled it out of the box yeah i just got a little bit ahead of myself cork pop Fresh bottle. That was about the easiest cork pop I've ever opened fresh. Mm. I liked that. So, Bullmore is the uh, first recorded distillery uh, open on Isla in 1779. It produces 30% of all its own malted barley. Uh, Spirits from the 1950s, 60s, and 70s are known for tropical fruit characteristics and is sought after by fans and collectors. In the 70s and 80s, though, the uh, distillery became known for more of a floral whiskey. Um, and then the spirits that are distilled in the 90s kind of have returned to the uh, fruitier characteristics of years past. So it is uh, 40% alcohol, so 6% lower than the Art Big of previous. It's Pretty defini- gentle. Definitely subtler. Yeah, I, that was my understanding. I've never had this one, but I've always kind of thought it was even more. So here's gentle. some flavor notes. Just a savor subtle lemon. Sweet, heather, honey, a delicious, long, and mellow finish. So light stuff, acidic stuff. It the nose reminds me of like a Highland, mm-hmm. like a you know maybe like a Deanston or something. And they want their signature style. They say is peat smoke, citrus, vanilla. So it, it's very light. On the nose. It's surprising. I was surprised that it was that dark. Well, they use that E150. Die. Definitely get that lemon. Holy moly. I actually used the token thing. We, yeah. we, we finally got ourselves some, some Glen Karen covering tokens. They're not ours, though. So Right. Well, you bought them, though, didn't you? Well, yeah, but they're not our brand. No, no. <laughs> we'll just get, like, a whiteboard. Cut, sir, cart, oh. Yeah, or cardboard. <laughs> Sharpie. <laughs> Hot glue. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. But yeah, lemon like crazy. After like, I guess I, I did that thing where you just like lift, sure. up, lift up the token. I do get honey on it. Wow. That's pretty cool. It's a very floral nose. Wow. Yeah, that's really cool. It really pops out of the glass. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Is this a new favorite, Isla? No. no. <laughs> I was going to say, I haven't even tasted it. No. Probably not. No. Mm-mm. No, it tastes like dust. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Well, I think it's mainly because 40%. That's weird. I'm letting it mellow. It is mellow weirdly out. ashy. It, yeah. There's fruity, but it is ashy. It's like it. it is. It's like a Highland that is... feels like, like you the ate ash note is a just handful cranks. of ash. Let's do a little water on this, this bad boy. Which isn't... You can give me some of that, too. Yeah. Disgusting. Well, a drip or two drips? Two drips. Carter, you want some drips? I'll do, yeah, I'll take the, I'll take some drip. <laughs> the nose on this is way better than the, the taste. Yeah, frankly, for me. Yep. But this is something <laughs> you, you know. You, I would never say this about whiskey, except for right now. I think the this, water improved it. Sorry, did it? Oh, no, okay. I, I, I was gonna say it removes this some is, of the ash note. This is crushable. <laughs> yeah, this is a crushable it, whiskey. It kind of is. This is a back. It's a good background idol. Yeah. This. This might be a good entry point for someone that doesn't like ash and smoke. 
you know. I could mix this in a cocktail, and I don't yeah, think water. I'd be angry. This would be a really good highball. Yeah. This would be amazing. Oh. In a, see, that's what I was thinking. This would be amazing in a highball. Mm. It's just like, because you, it's mostly, you know, club soda yeah. with just a little bit of scotch, and you just get that nice kind of like Isla-esque flavor to it, but you just get a good amount of like, it's just nice to have. It's kind of floral, yeah. bright. It just doesn't really, it works well. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think it's a little one dimensional, I guess, because, you know, I mean, you read it the back because yeah, I smelled lemon, taste ash, a little citrus, a little peat smoke. Yeah. But not enough to say anything. So it's just really mellow. That's it, it's that's not, its dimension. It's not complex. Mellow. Yeah. You buy this to say that you so. drink Isla if you don't like Isla. Like, yeah, you could. So this was, it's 50 bucks. I don't, I don't know. We'd really have to try it in a highball to see if it was worth it. Because I, yeah, I mean, I'm not I, for me. I'm not gonna buy it. I, mm-hmm. I would buy. I'd rather have a Pete Highland, right? Like a Deanson Twelve. Yeah. That'd be good. I love my Deanson Twelve or like um, Oban Oban Fourteen. Yeah. For sixty dollars or seventy dollars, it's like mm. the little a little bit extra money. You get you needed the little bay. You and I have had that kind of a little bay. You know yeah. that was that was pretty good. I like I enjoyed that. I would pick up the little bay. Over this Balmore 12. I think I would agree with you. So, Is there any more history about the Balmore that we want to talk about? Or? That's what I pulled. Um, the town that they're in is is the name of the distillery, the town of Balmore. Yep. So, is it is it Bowmore or Balmore? I think it's Bowmore. Okay. Yeah. So, if I mispronounce it, yeah. That's what Not, I, mean. I, was, I was just wondering because, like, it, you know, it seems like the Balmore rolls off the tongue but bowmore does sound more scottish so is i could be wrong so you know we can always go to google translate oh yeah because that would be yep. that'd be super accurate yeah have him pronounce it in gaelic islay <laughs> isla islay so yeah so the next one we have is uh the oh i switched i switched these uh oh so the next one we have actually is the Bricolati Distillery. I wanted to hear how Dylan pronounced the other one. He knows. Well, he knows I got confused because yeah. I'm like, like that's not right. That's like, not that's not alphabetic. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this one, th- the this place opened in 1881. The distillery has changed hands many times. Uh, it was closed in 1995 and left for five years. After it was reopened, mm-hmm. it was left in the hands of Jim McEwen, formerly the Bullmore distiller manager interesting interesting so there's a lot of uh seems like a lot of hand changing there is i mean that's kind of how that industry goes though yeah you know you even got, you gotta be in the States. States. yeah because yeah. like, yeah. if we you know you might dream about making whiskey but i don't know jack squat about making making something taste good after yeah. distilling it aging it you know like obviously you could do it is it gonna taste good probably, yeah, who knows? probably a lot of not those, yeah but, a lot of those guys have like you know their chemist backgrounds and yeah yeah just like they could be doing a lot more st- other stuff in that yeah. field and maybe they are with all the, t- the free time they have they got 12 years to, yeah exactly for yeah. that one creation to come to fruition all right oh cork pop on this this is the classic laddie um it's unbeated 50 percent doesn't even have any Anything else on it? No age statement? Lottie. No. Mm-hmm. Mm. There's a... There's an Isla documentary. Um, Isla. I think it's... I think it, it's called Isla. Thank you. But it's really <laughs> a, a love letter to uh, Bricklotti. And they interview... Uh, oh my God. <laughs> Shh. No one needs to know. It's a, we're talking about drip. He spilled like half an ounce. Couldn't get in the glass. No oh. one needs to know. They're never gonna know. Yeah, this is one that we actually stole from someone. To be to be honest. Thanks, Brian. And actually, uh, no, I bought this one and gave, gave it to him. Oh, it's so. again. Oh, it's yours. Yeah. So it's mine. Sorry about that. It's fine. But like, they hadn't drank like any. <laughs> yeah, it's still really it's like full. full. But hey, they put, okay. they put it on their top shelf, which means it's top shelf liquor, which means they appreciate it. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> is that how they work oh yeah so totally. the, my story behind this bottle mm. uh not specifically this bottle but Dang it. 
the the classic lottie is this was kind of the, one of the first islas that i had actually gotten to try is it because it's teal the color You're that's like, why brooklyn it stands it. out yes <laughs> actually <laughs> because brooklyn was kind of the first one that got into the peated stuff whereas before i was just drinking now creek small batch this yep. was before i really got into the whiskey but um like one of the first three was lot the classic lottie um our big 10 and lagavulin was those were the three that got me into you know the pd stuff it's so like the big three essentially yeah i mean kind of yeah i mean yeah i mean they're for me for sure but in general i mean other than like maybe lafroy that those are like the big three those are really the big three yeah and i just remember that this is an interesting nose. This actually smells kind of yeah. like the art bag. I, I remember not understanding how this couldn't be peated. You know? Really? Mm-hmm. Well, because it's unpeated. But going from like a log of woolen to this, mm-hmm. like and not understanding what peat actually does, it's not necessarily responsible for the smoke. And there's there is smoke on this. But the peat characteristic is not what's driving it. Right, it's more of the waters and stuff that they're getting. This smells like bourbon. Yeah, I don't get much on the nose. I, I mean, it's like vanilla, well, a little it, bit of hay, just, a little bit of vanilla. Just personally, I don't get much off the nose. I don't know if it's because of what we've already had, but it's just uh, this one's. No, I'm the same way on this nose. I it, think it's, it's because of the it's not peated, or maybe be. it's just how they mm-hmm. still it. But this is really fun to smell, though. It's yeah, it's just interesting. This is good. I Ooh. I always come back to this one. And appreciate caramel. it. Caramel. Yeah. A little bit of caramel on the nose or the taste. Car uh, on the nose. Yep. That's like the big one that I get off of it. I also get toffee. Like I said, bourbon. This is bourbon, guys. <laughs> it, uh, it's a Scottish it, bourbon. Bunahaven is just making. Or Buna, no. <laughs> Ex-bourbon cask. I mean, yeah, that's what the probably are all exclusively Park using. Lottie's just making mm-hmm. that. Well, I like it. I like this a lot. I've always liked it. It's it's kind of one of those sleepers for me where like I always get something else over this, but I when I come back to it, I'm like, oh, man, this is really good. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've had classic Lottie. Oh, it's so sugary. It and tastes like, like like you put granulated sugar in this and it swirled is, it around. Oh, yes, it is sugar. It's that 50% that's just pushing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was so excited. He's back <sighs> to the <gasps> stand. Yes, 50%. Yes, thank you. Whiskey, thank you. Oh, I should add some water to this. Let's get that eyedropper. We got it. Sorry. Oh, and now <laughs> Carter, Carter took it, your it idea. It is 50%, so we should open this up, definitely. I drank mine too fast, so you guys, you guys are going to have to depict accurately. Oh, man. This is... It's just good. This I don't remember it being day. this good. This is a good day. Mm-hmm. Ice cube. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the lights of the Goodyear blimp, and it said, Dylan is a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> I added two drops to mine. So did I. All right, I'm not going to shake it. You shake it. You're going to get different notes. So I'm, I'm going to do this one, so we can compare and contrast. Um... It seems that the water brought up more of an ashy note on the nose for me. The sugar is definitely there still in force. I think I just get more sugar. Ooh. Pepper. Pepper. That's weird. Pepper. You, you got pepper too? Pepper. Whoa. It's like I'm black great. pepper in the back of your throat. I, I, I almost got to pour some more. That like, made it, it removed the sugar. It did. Got rid of the sugar. Wow. That's sad. It is kind of sad. You like, if you like pepper. I kind of like it. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's like, oh yeah. That, that's a big change. <laughs> Dylan's descriptor is always just mm. like, they're just, oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Pepper. After every time, just, oh, yeah. Mm. There's an emotional response. Mm. Pepper. I could sit on this one. We, we need to do an episode once where we just have one whiskey and we just sit on it for as long as possible we'll call it fireside episodes be my little pepper we'll master. have the, the crackling of a a wood fire next to us yeah oh we could just dub it in so have you listened to the um that first episode of the uh like the, the single review i don't we still don't really have a name for what we're doing no, no I, haven't I didn't listen to, listen to it though yeah awkward 
I was gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna say. Uh, um, uh, it was really good, Dylan. You did a good oh, job. Thank you. Thank you. It was the, so the good. editing. What I was gonna say commentary. is we. we uh, it, it made me think of. Uh, uh, we the music that we have now. We got we got new an intro specifically for those. Okay. I'll have to show you at some point. Awesome. And, oh, so we have two. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we can you know differ the uh, the two. I like it. Episode. Things. styles we got our normal podcast then we kind of got like this little review you know bit to it which is kind of cool so and nice uh, nice yeah but it made me think of everything always makes me think of the whiskey vault and their intro with the piano mm. it's like this drinking this it makes me think of that intro for some reason yeah so Something. that emotional response yeah to the flavor where it's just nice classical piano it's not it's not heavy but it's still moving it's like stuff. when it's like yeah the when you string when you strum a harp or a nice, when when angels sing <laughs> or when it's you, a nice you classic hit. score yeah cuz like if you, if you could describe a whiskey with an instrument and a melody i would describe the lottie with a piano just if you've ever seen the whiskey vault episode mm-hmm. or, uh, intro that this that's, is what yeah. i would equate it to <laughs> mm. so, oh yeah that's good i just want to sit here all right um well it's too bad we can't so the next one we have what, do we talk about brocladi as a distillery no do we not i thought we did did we right away we did a little bit a little i think bit? yeah i i gave you a little bit it was a yeah. air distillery they do things Oh, my phone shut in my hand. Sorry. So, Berlotti, uh, once again, it opened 1881. Oh, yeah, we did talk about this. Yeah. Um, it was closed in 95 for five years, and then the manager from Bullmore came over yep. and saved it and made it as I think it is today. I think it's kind of interesting that some of these, I guess I didn't know... And it's interesting that you're bringing out, I like that we're going into the detail of some of the history behind these, but Mm -hmm. it's just like, I didn't realize that Berkeley was closed for a little bit. And what was it? Was it Bowmore or was it? Ardbeg. It was Ardbeg. I just didn't, I didn't realize that. We almost lost Ardbeg. Just because like, you see them as such a staple now. Mm -hmm. Um, But I guess when they were... Um, for for whatever reason for they were closed it's just it's interesting to have them they're like oh we should bring these back and they had to bring them back for some reason this this is good i like this um blends blended scotch has always been kind of the dominant yeah product not necessarily because it's not the fault of the blended scotch manufacturers Mm -hmm. it's that before then there was a lot of inconsistencies in flavor profiles. As in, like, single malts? Single malts didn't... That wasn't really a term, but yes. S- single malts kind of gained popularity in the mid-20th century, late 20th century. That's kind of when it started to be very popular. Okay. Um, it Prohibition, people think it to only have affected the United States. It, it didn't. It, it affected the worldwide spirits manufacturer mm-hmm. um because i mean that, that was a huge market it wasn't the whole market but that was a huge market and so when that happened you know we're talking 1919 to the 30s and that that really killed you know that i we, during that time you had ireland all those different um distilleries closed and then they were all owned under Middleton Distillery. Mm. You know, thank thank goodness. But like, they almost lost all of Ireland, Irish Scot or uh, whiskey, mm-hmm. Irish Scotch, Irish Scotch. Irish. That's my favorite kind. Yeah. So, but I mean, that was almost completely gone away with. And I mean, it 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 could have happened to Scotland too. But I mean, during that time, you had people looking for consistent flavors and that's when the blends really gained you know the 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 johnny walkers the um uh there's a famous one called black it was black and white something that walt disney famously exclusively drank (laughs) 
and um, uh, Bull. Anyways, but but that's kind of what saved Scotch in general. But the problem was if if you weren't part of a blend in those massive blended whiskeys, then you, you didn't really have a market. Yeah, and that's kind of the problem. And that's well, if you didn't have a market, then that's that's your business essentially. Yeah, your business goes down the tubes, and then you don't. And then, thankfully, what kind of happened is when in in seventies, eighties, and into the nineties, maybe closer to the nineties, but that's when single malt really started to gain recognition as a mark of quality. And during that time. You know, I've highlighted on it before, but like Lafroig was, um, they were actually kind of operating some of the machinery in our big, trying to keep it going, mm-hmm. just checking on it every once in a while. And um, thankfully, our big did come back, uh, but now you have the our big committee um, that, if you read the summarization of that that they're kind of like sworn to ensure that this distillery doesn't get Shut closed down. ever again because they almost lost it mm-hmm. so and they're just kinda, kind of uh in the mindset that they don't want to ever lose it yeah our, our big now is such a big asset that it would it would it would be, be devastating it, right yeah and i mean i isla in general i mean this is other than distillery, there's not really businesses. There's there's no other economy. Yeah, the, their economy is run off of um, distilleries and like tourists mm-hmm. going to the, to distilleries. the distilleries. But I do not. I I doubt everyone. The general consensus is there's no way that it could ever get that bad because there that was literally the floor, right? So once you're on the floor, there's nowhere to, else to go but up. So that's kind of the good news, at least it seems. So, hmm. but all right. Next, I did just to clarify the the Walt Disney drink intrigued me. But yeah, it was black and white. That was just the black name. That was just it. Okay. Was it like it was a cocktail going, or was it a scotch? No, it's a blend of scotch. It's a blend of scotch. But it's, it's originally called. It's a long name. Hold on, let me. It, like this is the full name of the whiskey. <laughs> Buchanan's. Because the, guy, the guy's name was James Buchanan. Buchanan. Buchanan's House of Commons Finest Old Highland Whiskey. Buchanan's is still is now its own. Yep. They still sell black and white. You can still get it. Yeah. Really? Yep. It's, it's not good. It's not. <laughs> it's not good. It's yeah. not good. That was actually, it was featured in the um, Walt Disney movie with. Uh, oh, the one with Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks. Yeah. There there was a reference to that. Really? In, uh, I'd never seen it, but it I had seen the clip and it, there is references to that because he would. That was that was his drink, was that black and white. It also says that uh, James Bond drank it in Moonraker. Wow! Yeah. Wow! <laughs> and little Owen Wilson, wow, right there. Wow! Wow! wow. All right, next one. Right, I'm Owen Wilson, one. baby. We're like not even halfway. Nope. So, I, it's great for the listeners. A, oh, this is it's a, so this is this is our jam. jam. This is the three of us's jam. Yep. You know, this is the heart of it. I just I love this stuff so much. Mm. It's just too good not to just chat about. So we have the Bunahaben Twelve. He said it right. He did it, man. I'm so proud of me. Yeah, so, proud of you. so open that up and then I'll go over it. Oh, yeah, that's nice. How was that cork pop compared to the Bowman? I bought pretty similar. more. Pretty similar. This one was harder just because it was more tightly sealed. It's better. Ooh. It's better than. So this, I didn't know. This is, so I guess, sorry, before, before the history, but it says it's aged in three different barrels. Did Probably not know Sherry that. X Bourbon and virgin oak maybe yeah it's sherry bourbon and other whiskeys it just says oh. but with a y so I'm, other scotch yeah it says uh yeah sherry bourbon and whiskey casks yeah. for a tranquil balance of soft sweet fruit and nuts with a hint of seaside smoke this is a malt with many layers to explore hmm. interesting so, history let's hear it history is mystery <laughs> so it was uh <laughs> opened in 1881 also at least according to my notes uh, it's right on the bottle known best for being unpeated whiskey produced since their own 
Malting closed in uh, 1963. Wait, this is unpeated? Mostly unpeated. Okay. Um, I've heard some people say this is completely unpeated. Some people say it's mostly unpeated. I'm not exactly sure on that. But it makes the largest amount of... They still make the largest amount of peated whiskey. They are famous for their um, part in producing whiskeys for the famous blend Black Bottle. Which is a mostly Isla sourced whiskey uh, for that blend. Never heard of it. Me neither. Is that something that is no longer made, or is that something that you can still get it? Um, we I, just don't drink. I would be curious to try that one. Um, I have. I don't know if you've actually ever seen it. I know. I know it's in Texas because. I have seen people have procured it, but I have never tried it. There was an older one that was discontinued recently that was supposedly more uh, Isla in that blend. And then of the recent one, they did a bottle redesign. Um, they think that it was lessened for cost savings because Isla is more, more expensive, expensive to source. So, but All right, let's do some sense. Sensory some analysis. It smells like sherry, like a like a dried fruit. Yeah, lots of sherry. Wow. <laughs> I recently had Ooh, a non-age dated. I forget what the edition was called, but it's pretty cheap. It's like forty-ish dollars total wine, and I I, I I absolutely loved it. What was it? It was I forget what the edition was called. I can look it up. Was it a Bunahaben? It was a Bunahaben. It was the, oh, the cheapest expression. The super. Had it. It, that thing is impossible to pronounce. Oh yeah, okay. hold on. I mean, the, I, can, I can get it up. Exactly. What is it? Look for. Yep. Mega Gaelic. But I love that. That was a really good cherry finished scotch. Um, recently, I had finished it and it was it is good. That is that is a good one, and that's cheap, relatively. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna say something about the the nose. I think it has a hint of peach ish okay but like i told zach i've never eaten a peach in my life (laughs) the only peach that smell i know of is from peach rings i was gonna say i'm like it's gonna be peach rings or something it's definitely peach rings so it smells probably like peach rings yeah it smells like peach rings not like a peach i get yeah i get the peach vibe not a whole lot, though, just because it's, I think it's just sugar, sweetness. Anybody know how to describe an apricot? Nutty. I've also never had an apricot. Like, it's like, uh, have you had, I'm trying to think something, something that's similar to an apricot, because it's like a cross between like an apple, as far as like fleshiness, okay. and kind of crunchiness, but also soft, like a... I don't know, like a cashew, honestly. Really? Yeah, if you could like combine an apple and a cashew together. So it's kind of like... Something somewhere in the middle of that. This makes me want to go find an apricot and eat it. I don't love them. I mean, they're it's okay, but I, I would never just buy apricots. Well, I just want to try them. I just, I'm just interested to try it. I'm getting vanilla and maybe cashews or some other nut. All right, so on their website... I feel peanut. ashamed. We've all been pronouncing it wrong. It's not. There's no second. It's not Bunaha Ben. It's Bunaha Ben. It's Bunaha Ven. Haven? The BH makes a V sound. No. Yeah. Bunaha Ven? Who says that? Bunaha. Bunaha Ven. <laughs> this is their website. They've been hacked. Do they have a pronunciation yeah, on it there? It says pronounce bun. So B U N N. Bun. Bun. Na. Ha. Ven. Banahaven. 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 Hmm. Dang. That is just spectacular. That's nice. Mm. And now I feel bad because I thought I had that on lock. I'm like, yeah, it's Bunahaven. <laughs> That's like what it is. That's what it says. I've, I've heard people say it. So have I. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Bunahaven. It's like, no, nah, you're wrong. That sucks. <laughs> how many uh how many times have we gone through a lot <laughs> it's been a lot it's been a lot we've tried to pronounce that name a lot of times 
This is why I usually stay quiet in the podcast because I don't want to sound like an idiot. Well, that's what makes a podcast. Yeah, it's idiots. Yeah. Like people don't want to listen to smart people. They that's a good read. Point. They'll read about smart people. They want to listen to dumb people. Dumb people. The, oh the most gosh. the people that get the most comments are ones that are wrong, and then they get comments from everyone just. Pro- yes, but they're hate them. comments. <laughs> but it's com- that. But that that on the YouTube algorithm shows community. You know, um, community involvement. Involvement. <laughs> anyway, the one you're talking about is called Stu Rotter. Stu Rotter. Okay. Yep. Bonahaven. Stu Rotter. Stu Rotter. Life is a lie. Yeah, it just feels wrong saying it like that. Guys, are we in a... Are we in the Matrix? Are we, yeah. Probably not. I think we're in the Matrix. No, it's too, too complex algorithms. There's no way. I think we're in the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> All right, finally on the taste, I think. Life is a simulation. Mm. This tastes a lot different than what I remember. I like this. I don't remember it being this good. This it's, is because this is so caramel. Is this oily. the peppery that you guys are talking about with the brucolati? It could be. I mm. was getting pepper on it. Yeah, I don't. This, this tastes peppery to me. It's not the same pepper. It's not, but it's there. Because would you consider the how would you brucolati more of like a crushed pepper? No. I, I guess I don't really know. I feel like I would compare it more to the ones that like the cheap pepper shakers. The real fine pepper, like the really, yeah, the really, really fine this, ones. This to me might be more of the. It's like a peppercorn. Coarse. It's like a peppercorn. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like real pepper. Because that one, I, I feel like a finer a finer pepper. Uh, from the cheaper ones are like more spiky and like sp- spicy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where this is more flavorful. It adds more to it instead of just kind of like being like. Like that, that, like the 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 finer one is more. It's pricky, where this is more. I I, I feel like the flavor ex- extends itself longer. If that makes sense. Yeah, this is long lasting. I think I understand. Forty six percent, forty six point three. On the back of my tongue, which it's might very, be the highest. Oh no, forty six point three. Well, Ricotti's fifty. We have fifty, but um, it leaves a nice flavor on the back of my tongue that I really enjoy. Yeah, Ricotti's the highest. Yeah. I like it. It's a caramel. Um, it it's pepper through and through, mm. and a vanilla. Yeah, I don't like the way this finishes on my tongue. It is smoky. It, like, it is smoky. I do recognize the smoke. A it like puts a burn like, on it that I don't want. Where? Right in the center. Right in like, the center. Yeah, it's just like mm. it's like uh, it tastes. The finish on this is very long lasting. Yeah, it just tastes ashy and dusty because i and get like it makes my tongue like coated i get in. more of like a spicy on the back of my tongue yeah i don't get it's a little spicy i guess right away but it kind of mellows out for me this i this to me seems it has a complexity on par finally with the art bag that we finally got i think we finally got back to a whiskey that has as much complexity as our big, but in a different way. Mm-hmm. But I think we're finally back to that complexity. Uh, could you pass me the eyedropper? Uh, yeah. Now, I have a question. Mm. So, Thank you. I understand that we all have different ways of, you know, doing things. So how... <laughs> how <laughs> doing what? Let me, <laughs> let me finish with what I'm saying because you didn't... How do you guys how do you like, whiskey? drink whiskey? Well, how do you choose to drink it? We talked we talked about this last time. Well, I mean not like not like choose to drink it, but how do you like in your mouth? How does it how do yeah, you that's that's what you asked. That's it on. Yeah. We no, talked, we have we had talked we we asked this, but we didn't like Yeah, we we we, we talked about how we drink the whiskey. How, we did? Yeah, we like when you put in your mouth and when you swallow it. He's what, right, but what I understand what you're you asking. Cuz I'm just kind of interested cuz I know me and Dylan have kind of had like we kind of had a realization that we agree on a lot of, of flavor maybe notes doing it differently. Yeah. As far as where it sits on our mouth, what we do when, yes. it's, when it's in our mouth. Yes. And I think That's that what he's getting at. I think it is okay. because I, because me and Dylan were talking about this and we were like, me and him have a lot of similar similarities when it comes to our flavor notes. Mm. Um, and you have a lot, Zach has a lot of different, 
ideas. He pulls out a different, a lot of different, things. a lot of different things. And I'm just kind of curious if that's like mm. maybe where it's hitting okay. in your mouth. Well, I guess I thought I thought we talked about this, but anyway, what I do, I don't is think I, we did. We didn't go in depth though. Yeah. I think we, the resolve wasn't. Yeah, okay. we did, so I, but it wasn't like I pucker my lip a little bit because I'm accepting that this is going to be all whiskey is a little hot because it's alcoholic, and then it kind of it hits the center first, mm-hmm. and then I relax the tongue so that it washes over the front. Right, so it's like mm, meh. Okay. And then I, after I go meh in my <laughs> mouth, then I kind of throw it back, you know. And then the residuals tingle the mouth, you okay. know. Okay. Okay. Does it ever touch the sides of your mouth? No. Never touches your cheeks. No. Okay. N- pretty much never. Like I'll let it just you know fall, but pretty much cascade down the back of my tongue after I. So I, I like cup it a little bit in the mm-hmm. center, then it goes forward. And then I just relax. I relax all the muscles because now, now the yeah. alcoholic tingledness is gone because I already accepted it, you mm-hmm. know. And the taste buds get used to it. And then most of the fav- the flavor, honestly, comes from the vapors, you know, because when you let it sit on your tongue for so long, it starts to acidify basically. Yeah. And my, my taste buds start to like reject <laughs> like- things. So then it then it swells, you know, up to the roof of my mouth. Okay. So a lot of the flavors become scents, or a lot of the scents become flavors. Interesting. I like it. I pucker my other cheeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every every time, just like, <laughs> I'm ready. No, I, I think yeah, because okay. I kind of uh, I kind of roll my tongue. Back. Yeah, I don't do any like movement of the tongue. It just it hits the tongue in the middle, goes to the front because I'm usually slouching, honestly, and then I just relax all the muscles in my mouth. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I get a. I kind of put it on like the front. Mm-hmm. And the, then your tongue. Yeah, the front of my tongue. And then I kind of like push it up to the roof of my mouth, and then it kind of slides back. So okay. I get. I think I get a lot more of the flavor on the back of my tongue. I'm gonna, is, tr- I'm gonna try that in the next one. I'm gonna go. I. So and the only reason why I do this is because I was. Um, I think I've just kind of always done it, but. I don't know how uh, valid it is or what it is. Um, I was talking with Skylar and he was saying that uh, Bruce Mm -hmm. was saying like, okay, so if you're going to do like, say, uh, I guess a beer and a bump. Mm -hmm. So say it's Guinness and I don't know. I mean, let's say Jameson. Okay. That you you should drink the Jameson and then never let it touch the sides of your mouth, mm-hmm. but do that where it rolls, roll your tongue, and then drink the Guinness because it like increases the flavor. Or I might have this wrong. The, wh- or, the or thing- maybe it's that it increases the flavor of the whiskey. The first flag. That, well, I wouldn't. The thing I would say is the, the there's no should. Mm-hmm. There's. It's. I don't know. Bruce. Bruce would definitely say this should. He, well, that that's my thing. He's of. He, what, what is it? I but that he, that's snobbery then. No, exactly. Because because he uh, he is of Scottish royal descent. Uh-huh. Oh, he is. Yep. And he he went. That's what he he found out pretty much when he went to Scotland. Really. Yeah. Very very long long lineage, long time ago. Okay. Very small royalty. Well, well, well I would I was what I would say. But is no, there's, no, like, there's Nothing against Bruce's or how he does no, anything. No, no. Well, and that's yeah. that's what I mean. it it depends it depends where you are. If you if you're there and somebody's offering you something, then yeah, then you should you know res- yeah respect the the how they want how they would do it. Correct. You're the guest. You should you know. Well, no, but he was saying that's the way in life in general. Yeah, but that's that's the way you do a chaser, pretty much. Well, and I I can't remember exactly. Then that's was, snobbery. Was if it so. was. <laughs> That you were just supposed to drink whiskey like mm-hmm. that, where he's talking. The part I, I find funny is he's talking. He's being snobbish, but also talking about doing it with a beer and a bump. Yeah, that's like the less. Like I said, <laughs> like I said, yeah. I you, don't remember if, if it was you, specifically a beer and a guy, bump. If you knew the guy, Dylan, you would totally understand. Yeah, yeah. and that's kind of a, yeah, yeah. But it makes sense there, when we're talking in context of Bruce. Yeah, there's not there's not a right or wrong way. There's no right or wrong way it's all to different. En- enjoy your whiskey. Enjoy it how you m- 
May. The, the main thing is what we're doing is making sure that we're communicating the differences of how we're enjoying it so we yep. can understand what the language is, essentially. Yeah, and that's kind of why I was kind of interested in that because, like, I think, yeah, when me and Dylan taste something, you taste something different, I'm just kind of curious where that may, like, fall on your tongue or, like, right. what yeah. what that kind yeah. of... Uh, to remove the... the s- s- quote unquote the language bear barrier yeah know. yeah exactly i wonder if we should be like breathing in more when <laughs> we, or or through our nose you know just like getting more air into the mouth while it's while the whiskey well, is that's in interesting the mouth because there the, have you ever heard referred the uh, um i think we should cup it well there's something there there's something called it's the same thing they do in scotland but in kentucky they have a name for it it's called the kentucky chew mm-hmm. and it they they chew it. Yeah, they so eat. They, they do some tobacco. Chew some tobacco first. Yep. No, it's joke. Delicious. But they yeah they, they like move, they move it around a lot. Yeah. They and, get, I, and I sometimes do that. But yeah. Not all the time. But next one. All right. Next one. I think it'd be interesting if we all did a Kentucky chew. Just tried it. Well, I don't know. I don't know how to do a Kentucky chew. Well, I think I it's mean, just, just kind of like obviously just chewing your mouth, but that's about it. Just, just move your jaw and tongue around. So it coats everything. Yeah. It better be high proof then, because I got a lot of saliva in my mouth. It just sits there, you know. <laughs> it's gonna prove it down. It's gonna, to the yeah, saliva. it's gonna prove it down. It's my cheek. So the next one we have is Colila. Open in 1846. It is the largest uh, distillery on Isla. They make double the amount of Lafroig. And they are the Isla part of the Johnny Walker blends. Really? Yep. Th- this is what they get the smoke from. Delicious. So um they uh, they are also known for their unpeated editions too. So. I find it interesting that a lot of these places make unpeated editions as well. Mm-hmm. For the better, I mean, that, yeah, that Perplot is very good. Yep, very good. Quick pop. Ooh, squeaky squeak. So this is also a first for me. Never had Kalila. I don't know. I, if I remember. A... I, I I've only had it once. I remember Coco being a very dominant flavor i don't know why but i also love how they spell the name i don't i don't know why colila colila Colila. so okay i'm I'm gonna do your guys well you know the aggregate of your guys's way how do i drink this i put it i'm drinking it and it's like in my gum no no no. so it kind of sits on the like the middle i just i aim for the the middle to like the tip of the tongue and then you just kind of I just roll it back. Yeah, I, if if you hit your gums, then that's not what, right. What I, I, I mean. I, I'm not like saying that's how you should or what you do. No, I'm, no, no, I'm no, neither. No. Neither am I. I'm just just I, saying. Carter's, I think Carter's just taking the initiative and trying to figure yeah. out like okay, what, so, how so we're I'm drinking doing. it, and it's my tip is right there, ready to accept. So I, whiskey. I, I put it like almost almost in the glass, just like ready to. Yeah. Okay. So I wonder if I could show you. Well, let's well, okay. let's nose it first. Let's nose it first. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. that, that there's a so cocoa, good. and then dang, it's like a it's like a shea butter. It is like it's a shea very butter, oily and buttery. You know, I've never, I guess I've never really had a flavor profile maple. for a shea butter. Oh, maple, 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 maple. Mm. This could almost be a lotion scent, guys. Like, it's pretty fantastic. If, if, like, you, honestly, yeah. We're, we're thinking about branding some candles. This is one that really ought to be a candle. Kalila brand candle. Mm-mm. Okay, I'm gonna Honest, watch. Okay. I'm gonna watch Jill. Good. How he drinks. I. Uh... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be this would be the equivalent then. Yeah, it just goes. It just washes it. Okay. Yeah. So it's still on the tip yep. of my yep. tongue. Yeah, I don't. I don't do demonstrate. That. Yeah. Sure. Pretty similar. As and far I, as the it's just, placement, yeah. The, the middle of my tongue kind of goes to the top roof of my mouth as it kind of... As you smack your... As you, I guess I don't really know how to explain it well. It's like... I move my tongue around a little bit. Yeah, it, it's like it goes up and then it kind of washes over as mm. as the top of... Uh, I, I think it's, it's like the crest of my tongue and then it goes down. Like the top of my tongue, the middle of my right. tongue hits the roof of my mouth and then it 
goes down the back of my head. For me, I, I think it's more important than how I do it. For, but for me personally, it's it's making sure that I have a I've completely coated your tongue all off. the all the sensories yeah. in my tongue because I did it and it made the roof of my mouth really hot and smoky. Really, you know, like because I I put my tongue up as soon as it went on my tongue and started to wash. I just put my tongue up, you know, like, mm. I, like I like pulled it back and then it hit the roof. And now the roof of my mouth is like numb. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I don't know. I'm should, just, should I demonstrate my way? <laughs> well, I was just kind of curious because I think it's interesting that depending on how you drink it and where it falls, there's a lot of differences. There's a lot of differences. Yep. I was just kind of curious about yeah, that. You're right. Cause this is, well, when I did it, the, I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. It tastes like, like Hershey's chocolate. So it tastes very different. Yeah. And when I did it, my perceived way of your guys's, it was just like fire and smoke, like predominant spiciness. Okay. So how do you, I'm curious. How do you do it then? It's like, it's, it's just the lip. It's lip. And my tongue is like down, you know, like in my mouth. So like against the back of your teeth? Uh, lower, like in, like in my gum. It's it's like, yeah, it's in the divot of my jaw. Okay. And then it goes in the middle. So does it ever touch the front of your tongue, or is it just middle and then back? It's middle, front, back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. I did it wrong then. Okay. So it's like, because you're basically you're pushing the middle of your tongue closest to the glass. Yeah. And then I taste chocolate. Yeah. Like, I definitely could see where you get the chocolate note. For me, doing that, it. I could totally see different flavors coming mm-hmm. for me for the for, specifically for this one. It, it changed the order mm-hmm. of how I experienced the, the flavors. It's also very peppery to me. Peppery. It seems peppery. Yeah. This was the, to me person. It was, it was peppery both ways, both ways, always. but yeah. it was, it was always peppery, but I think his way was just a little bit more peppery, but also it kind of offset it for with me. It the made chocolate. it more bitter, more bitter. It brought the chocolate forward. Yeah. And the bitterness, so more like a baked pushed, chocolate, but it pushed the pepper note towards mm-hmm. more of the ending, beginning to the through the end. I don't know. I just think it's interesting because you're going like middle, front, back. Mm-hmm. It it seems opposite, a little bit. Yeah, but I I like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would. I, I'm gonna pour a little bit more. I want to add some water to this one because yeah. I, I am interested in the I, water. I need I need some water too. Where did it go? The dropper is right up there. Yep. I don't know. I uh, I like this. I really like the Kalila. Here's the problem: is for me, the Kalila is on. It's well, for a lot of people, it's on the same price range as Lagavulin on sixteen. So it's like a hundred bucks. So I always compare like the, seventy, the Kalila, 70? Well, 80, eighty. Okay. Yeah, I always compare the Kalila to Lagavulin on sixteen. Mm-hmm. So it's like, am I going to get the Lagavulin on sixteen? Am I going to get Kalila or the Kalila? We're going to find out in a few but i just kind of understanding like the log as it is like from what i remember what i can recall the log has a lot more intensity to it really yeah i remember it having a lot more intensity my memory is the opposite really yeah because the sherry it like it starts off more fruity mellow is there sh- I don't no know no if- of, of the log Sharing the log? I forget if there's sharing log. There might be. I, think I didn't I think, think... I think it's supposed to be a little bit, yeah. A little bit? Yeah, because well, they have the sherry finished log, and yeah. then they have, I thought, mm. regular log has sherry in its history. I can look it up. All right. I guess I don't remember it having that very uh, sweet kind of fruity note to it. I remember it just being like kind of briny. For which one? The log. Okay. For what? M- okay. And it, it, it's not like terribly briny, but it's just like, I feel like your hmm. baseline, if you're thinking Whoa, this, peaty, smoke. Sorry. The, when I added the water, the nose, the pepper note is boom. It, just amp. Yeah. It's out of the glass. Really? Followed by a, like a charcoal fire. Interesting. Not like a wood. And brininess. Wow. Yeah. There's less water. There's less uh, whiskey in here than there was in the first pour, and it is way more uh, you mean present. Charcoal, as in it actually smells like the briquettes itself, or it smells kind of like lighter fluid. Probably the lighter fluid. The first initial startup of a, a charcoal fire. 
So that's kinda, what I mean. Kind of chemically. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. You know, interesting. But did I ruin your train of thought? No. Uh, well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna taste this then. I was like, eh, no, you did a little bit. A little it bit. um, there's more floral. Pepper's still there, but it kind of maimed it a little bit. Um, yeah. That could go either way, I think. Interesting. Uh, as far as preferring it with or without water. It really changed it, though. It's a completely different whiskey now. It's weird. You got anything on that? Gotta love water. Yeah, so yeah, right here, the Lock 16 has got nothing to do with sherry. Huh. It's just a predominant. That is in most of the tasting notes. Really? Yeah. Of the like, three websites I went on, they're like, yeah, the palate. Mm, it's like sherry. <laughs> But it's not. So know. it's never touched a sherry anything. No. It just, just has kind of, that kind of sweetness to it. Lager Bullen has never touched sherry. <laughs> sherry, dismiss these. Get out of here, sherry. Dismiss these allegations. Yep. Uh, <laughs> do we talk about log? Or, uh, <laughs> no, I'm log. <laughs> I'm skipping ahead. Kalila? Do we talk about Kalila? The history. We have not. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I opened my phone and I noticed what time it was like. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's just like, oh. Uh, um, Coloman. This is we're going this to Coloman. That's the next Col- one. I thought. We, I thought. Did we need to talk was, about Colila? The, the Colila history. Did we talk about that? Oh, we did. No, yeah, we did. Yeah, we, okay. The blending yeah, and just double checking. Yep. Oh, yeah, because yep. they were part of uh, Johnny, Johnny Walker. Walker. Yep, another famous one. Uh, so Coloman is the second newest distillery in Isla. Opened two thousand five, and uh, Coloman is known for growing their own barley. But they still do source a part of it because they're not able to uh, keep up with the demand. Um, they use barley from the Port Ellen location um, still. That's where they source it, like most other distilleries. And we are finally starting to see them hit ranges of age of 10 years and plus. So we're finally starting to see the fruits of their labor, so to speak. But that's about it. It's grain glass. So they're producing their... Um, they're producing the grain and the spirit. They have their own farm. They're growing barley, um, but they still have to source it because of the supply and demand. So, cork pop. Ooh, it's a thick cork. That thing was really stuck. I think it's kind of interesting that it's good to know that they have to source some of their grain just because it means, of the it means demand. they're doing well. That's yeah. what I mean. Is it's the demand? It's that like they. They grow their own, mm-hmm. but it's not like they're reliant on just growing mm-hmm. that they can. Right. They know that they're big enough that they have to source. Yep. Yep. Which is nice. I This is the first Coloman I've ever had. This is the cheapest one. And this not is necessarily the, their most successful or. This is the base one. This is the, well, base as being the start, cheapest. Starter. Yeah. For Coloman. So. This is amazing. This label. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? What do you mean the label? It has NFC in no the label. Way. It in takes the label. you to the website that yeah. doesn't work. It's awesome. <laughs> that it's, is awesome. The Scottish spent so much time and money developing the <laughs> NFC chip. <laughs> like, how much money do we have to finish on this website? $100. Uh, that's it. Uh, make it a website that doesn't work. I just I saw the NFC enable. I'm like, no, yeah, no. Yeah. So I, I turned it on my phone. I'm like, and then I, I put it up to the label. Mm. Beep. What? That's insane. I like that. Bo- it's a good looking model. Mm-hmm. It's hefty. It's thick. It I, it's really thick in the mm-hmm. bottom. That's a dram right there. That is a dram. I love the logo. The logo is great. It reminds me of Monkey Shoulder. Yeah. It kind of does, but it's just like it's also the same color as Monkey Shoulder. I don't, I don't I know what this they, symbol is, no but it's really color. cool. No, they don't. The glunt, um, Monkey Shoulder is all it's blended Highland, and we we used to know the three distilleries that came from it. Yeah. One was Glen Farkless, um, but they're I think they're all Highland or Speyside. Yeah, but you can find out uh, what distilleries they at least originally used. Ooh, interesting. So this is um. My Char Bay. Is that, you think how that's pronounced? Mashir Bay? Yeah, Mashar? Yeah, I'd say Makir. Makir. 46%. Non chill filtered, natural colors. So we already kind of went over the history. I'm going to see if we can get a nose on this. Mm. Kind of caramely. So my memory of this. Salty? Not, Salted caramel. So, yeah. 
not comparing this to the airbag um, directly previously, but my memory, this was very similar to airbag 10 in my memory. Okay. It smells pretty similar. It may be a little bit more caramel. I think it's a little bit more caramel. It's yeah. salty. It's salty. It is very salty. This is different than our big 10. Tastes salty too. It oh, is, it is Ooh. sweetie. That is, it's like a weird. <laughs> this is different. It's is like different. a weird, this is sweet, different. salted caramel. Wow. Very, very salty. I'm kind of curious. How much was that it's bottle? It's an over salted caramel. How much, how much was that bottle? I would have to look. I will look though. Um, because now I'm kind of interested because I really enjoy that flavor profile. Yeah, I, I do too. Do you know why I like it so much? Because of the NFC. Yeah, but also, <laughs> it tastes like pickles, guys. This you know is, what? This has got vinegar in it. I hate pickles. This has got vinegar in it. I hate vinegar and I hate pickles. This is $55 total wine. That's not bad. That's really good. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Yeah, this is different. This is not anywhere close to our Big Ten. Dang. That is delicious. Oh. I don't think it beats... It doesn't beat out Ardbeg. Ardbeg's... It's... Or, like, Laphroaig for me, because I really love those two. Yeah. Or even Lagavulin. But, like, man, that is good. We'll have to rate these at the end. I don't even think I can. It's just, like, they're all... Some of them have just... So, they're so good... That they're just good for different reasons. Well, like we kind of talked about, like the Bullmore. Well, that was a little the weird. The Bunahaven, or whatever it's bu- supposed, bu- supposed to be called. Bunahaven. 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 On the website, it's B-U-N-N. Bun. Bun. Bunahaven. 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 Bun- 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 yeah. right. Well, crazy. I won't nail that. No. Nope. Nope, I- never. <sighs> From this point on, let it be known we mean that. Yep. Um, but the B word? The B word. <laughs> we'll call it the B word. <laughs> yeah, that B word 12. Wow. Man, so peppery. So peppery. Complex. Have, we have a guest on and like, oh. <laughs> the B word? What is he talking about? <laughs> What's the B word? It's like, oh. But like, the Bullmore and the uh, the Bunahaben, those are outliers in the Isla category. Oh, yeah. But yeah, like you said, I mean, they're, they're just in this group there is such a variety of flavor that it is hard to compare the two i just think if you're in different mood there's not like a i'm in an isla mood and then you're gonna grab uh bunhaben yeah and compare it to lafroy lafroy it's it's completely different and it's not even fair to compare the two there was an intense eye drop moment between zach and i (laughs) There's a lot of eye contact. I, yeah, lot of eye it contact. was kind of awkward. I didn't really enjoy it. This is very... It, it's so sweet. And Oops. it's like... You know, it may be more similar to the Our Big Wee Beastie than the 10. Yeah. I, I mean, agree. Yeah. Let's re-examine. I should have brought Wee Beastie. I was kind of thinking about it, but I didn't. They may have it. They may have it. Can do a quick quick search. I can go run yeah. over there real quick. I, I see what you're talking about because it's very smoke forward, especially after the water just now. But it's still Ooh. sweeter, like it, like the wee beastie is. Yeah, it's yep. mm. super sweet. This deleted actually a lot. I didn't like adding the water; made it worse for me. Yeah, I didn't like adding the water. Mm. Just in terms of it, it lost a lot wow. of the flavor wow. and didn't replace it with anything more pleasant. I still just think that it, it's, for the, for it's a good. first impression yeah. of Coloman, never had this before, first time on the podcast. Mm-hmm. That's really, really, really good. Are we going to explore further this for sure? I yeah. would love to get deeper into the Coloman line. Yeah. Yeah. Who's responsible for this? Who's Mr. Coloman? Or Mrs. Coloman? <laughs> I want to know. The or a couple Coloman? We couple named the Coloman. distillery after the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Coloman. Ooh, that's a good dog name. Coloman. Coloman. It's like a German shepherd or like a. Yeah. It's like a mastiff. <laughs> it's, yeah. Big mastiff. Good hey, Coloman. That is good. Mm. My lord. Wow. That is delicious. This thing was filled. Was it like a quarter now? It, it's gone. <laughs> My water jug, that's like the equivalent of like 1% of the earth's fresh water. A mega jug. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It's like a half gallon. So Mr. Coloman is actually Anthony Wills. He's the founder. He's so I, I gotta find I gotta find the master distiller if it's not him. He's gotta change what, his yeah, what, he's gotta change his name to Mr. Coloman. Well yeah. the question is where does Coloman come from as far as the naming? If yeah. it isn't a person. Let me keep looking on their website. Well, I'll I'll read the next category. So number eight. We are at Log of Woolen. This opened in eighteen sixteen. Uh, Peter Mackey, creator of White House Blend, owned the distillery in the late 1800s and was also the sales agent for Lefroy. He lost the agency in 1907. He then built a new distillery at Lagavulin that would uh, make whiskey that was identical to Lefroy. So, so it's kind hope. of the same... This No, this is the same person. Oh, it's the, the same guy. That I, yep, yep. Okay. I'll, I'll get to it. Um, his plans failed, and when the whiskey was completely different, and Malt Hill closed in the 60s, the Malt Hill is now the visitor center for Lagavulin. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that Lagavulin So Lagavulin was already Hill. established? No. La- Lagavulin was Malt Hill. Okay. He opened a distillery called Malt Hill. Mm-hmm. It failed, then it became... Log at cool. some point. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because he was fired, lost the agency in nineteen oh seven. Built a new distillery. And picked up a very distinct flavor profile. Yeah, so Malt Hill was closed in the nineteen sixties, so probably I'm not sure at what point after the sixties it became Log of Woolen. But that's that's the history. Yes. <laughs> I just had a weird throatal. You have some acid reflux? Yeah, it was, I've never had a sound like that come out of my chest. <laughs> it was like, like, it was like a, it's the vibration started here and then it's worked its way up. Sorry about that. Could you hear that at all? No. Okay. No. Just wanted, okay. Because it was very loud in my own body. I was like, <laughs> it, like, it was oh like God. rumbling my chest. I'm like, I'm going to die. What's happening right now? I'm excited for this one. We, we all love log rolling. Love log. This is like. This is what made me love, in general, love. <laughs> this is what made me I love. Was? This is what made Log-a-vol me care 16. as a person. <laughs> Quirk pop. This is what made me decided that breathing in smoke isn't all that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like not being able to breathe. <clears throat> Ooh. Give yourself a healthy pour there. It's he so likes it. He it's likes just it. so good. We take appropriate breaks and measures. On this podcast. No, we don't. <laughs> Drink responsibly, please. Mm. 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 Here's the problem. Mm-hmm. Here's the problem. Nostalgia is the problem. That's what I was getting at. Is even if this whiskey is on a scientific level worse, like if if it's objectively not as oh. good, our our brain the is brain. not made to be fair no it prioritizes experiences <laughs> and nostalgia like that to take over reason yeah because this this just makes me smile this just makes me happy because mm-hmm. yep. when you think of this it, it pushes memories experiences and people you were with over the physical whiskey i don't i honestly don't know why but it, it's literally just like it makes me think of just like good times and I've that's had. exactly what I mean, yeah. And it's just, I mean, I, I understand, like, that's, it's just like, wow. Yep. Wow. And it can be yours for, like, 80 bucks. 80 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's caramel. Yeah. It's, it's actually pretty, I mean, like, I'm I'm trying really hard. So I'm going to forget everything I like about this thing. Yeah. And it's it's not that amazing smelling compared to what we've, like, the Coloman smelled no. a lot better. It's better than the Colila smell. But both the Bunahaben, the Brucladi, the Ardbeg, all smelled had a better nose, better nose, yeah, yeah, than this. Interesting. Yep. What I'm trying to dial in is more of the comparison between the Colila and this to this because yeah. they're on the price range. Yep. For each other, I mean, four more years does a lot. I mean, no, it does. Yeah. It's hard to say. Well, Colila. So there was a YouTube video about the. It was all mostly. It was like. 
out of the five, four of them were bourbon uh, distillers. Mm-hmm. And they brought their favorite scotch, or the, sorry, their favorite whiskey. It mm. wasn't their own, mm-hmm. and they were all scotch. It was all scotch. All scotch. And Colila, oh, I, Colila was that one person's yeah. favorite. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then I had Colila. I was like, it's Dad, kind of the well. under. It's like it. It's weird because it seems like the underdog for Isla. Yeah. Right. But their own product is more, is less widely known than the supply that they're giving to uh, blending companies. Mm-hmm. But mm. It's really minty. It is mints and mint on the nose. It is. I got leather on the nose. Yeah, leather too. Wow, but man, I don't get any leather. Really? Mm. I this is the first time yeah. I've gotten leather on it. So I know, I know. If you put this in a Norland glass, it smells like worn leather, like really? crazy. Because I've smelled it out of your Northern glass. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that kind of smells like an old fart. To be honest, <laughs> like. <laughs> it's it's okay, but like it's dark and deep. It smells like it smells worn like worn leather. Fart. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. That I love that note. That's so great. Mm-mm-mm-mm. It tastes so good. That's really peppery. That's a lot more peppery than I remember. That's a lot more peppery than Kalila. Yeah, that's. I didn't think that. I don't remember that. This. It's more rounded. Yeah, it's um. Mm. It's like honey. I got a little honey from it this time. Honey and pepper. Yeah, totally. Like a yeah. Nice sweetness. Yeah, let me I'm gonna do it your your sipping style. So <clears throat> and I just Ooh. did Zach's sipping style. I'm gonna I'm gonna do Zach's too. Ooh, that brought up. It's way it's less Wow, that's like way more pungent when you do it your way. It's very pungent. Yeah, yeah. It it's, tastes, is it a it's, little more pep, like peppery a, than you? No, it's more tobacco. Tobacco. Oh yeah. Yours brought out a weird butter caramel. Yeah, yours is forward. Like, yours is like weed, dude. Like marijuana. <laughs> For real? Oh, I don't think we can. The say devil's that. lettuce. The devil's lettuce. <laughs> dude, that's like. That's because when I did yours, I tasted the honey more. Yeah, and then I was like, I don't know if it's like if it's hitting somewhere on your tongue. I, it's where prioritizing. It's, yeah, it's well, it's, you, it's hitting those yeah. sweet notes, the receptors. It's, yeah, it, it's probably all about which receptors. Not activated. on his note because the your, oh. your on your tongue, the I, whoever that was, I heard that was me. Okay, <laughs> that, was, that was my gurgle. I thought that was me. Sorry, so loud. yeah, <laughs> but it. Because your tongue, and I might not be 100% accurate on this, but if you look at the the map the of map, the receptors, so to speak, yeah, the kinds of flavors you can taste and your, where. Your sweet receptors are more so on the front, yep. and the bitterness are towards the back. Interesting. But and it's I don't know. weird that it prioritized, because for me, it did the same thing. Prioritized butter and caramel mm-hmm. on the notes. And then for me, the pepper then, once it hit the front, became apparent. It's so weird. The the slight changes of of the way the slight changes on the way that you perceive or not perceive but how you um you taste completely changes the the whiskey. Ooh. Uh, try to try to Kentucky chew it. Oh yes. Mm, my pleasure. That was weird. Oh, it's so bitter. I just get like spice. Like, oh, it's so yeah, bitter. Like, spice. Like, like an all spice kind of thing. Oh no, I get like <laughs> it like makes you want to like pucker your face. It's sour. It's like mm-hmm. mm. yeah. I kind of like the sour. It tastes I, like I hot sauce. It gave me Delta variant. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm vaccinated. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. No, I brought out spice and what what did you say? You said uh um, I just said all spice. He said sour. It was like sour. I, I, I could see it. Yeah, I could see it. It tasted like a sour patch kid. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a drop of water. Dang, like that was Ooh, that was weird. We're we're gonna have to do some sort of blind between Puppies, yeah. Col- yeah, cause I, I really want to do that at some point. Between the Kalila and the log? Currently I, I think I would say objectively, the Kalila is better. I kind of like the Kalila more. I would still buy the Lagavulin, only because of memories, though. 
It is very m- memorable. Mm. Plus, Log makes, I guess I haven't had any of a, any other of Cole Evo's expressions, but Log makes a great Distillers edition, a great Nick Offerman edition. Yeah, it really does. And the cast strength. And the cast strength. But almost, almost all of those I like better than a regular 16, you know? Yeah. As far as objective flavor profiles, you know, I was you know, so okay. amazed at what they've done yeah. with what they've, you know, uh, adapted to this, or the, what we think is their baseline product slash expression. Yeah. Just kind of the same thing with the Coloman. I would be interested to delve a little bit deeper oh, extremely. into the yeah. Kalila yep. uh, lineup, you know, having their... I've heard that the... Yeah. Ooh, was it the 16 or the 18? I forget what expression is after this. The unpainted version of either the 16 or the 18 is superb. Really? Yeah. But I no, excuse me. It might be there might be two because I think there's an unpainted 12, and then there's an increased age statement. But I'm not sure uh, to what year that is. But no, there. Uh, yeah, it's. Scratching the surface. <laughs> I mean, that, and that's what the point of this video is, is or this audio format. It, these are the core expressions, the beginning, the entry points of these distilleries. And from that point on, then it just, it, it's whatever you choose to go down that path. Adding know? a little bit of water to that, the log, log bull in 16, kind of mellows it out. Kind of, I kind of like it. I, I agree. But... I don't know. I just think that that like pepperiness to it. It was more interesting, I think, before the water. Yes, this is friendly. It's friendly, but still complex. It's but, still complex. Yeah, it's definitely less peppery, um, but still has a nice amount of smoke, and it's just very easy to drink. Uh, really nice. I just I think I prefer it without water. I do too. I think it. Well, yep. This is the regular, so it's forty three or forty six. Forty three. Yep. With water, it's too mellow. It's too mellow for being so strong, you know. Yeah. Because yep. it, it tastes really smoky. It, it it's very uh, spiky, and all of its like if you you know we use the distiller app, and they like to use a little bar graph to to uh, decipher what flavor profiles mm. you know fruity, tangy, whatever. It'd be like boom. It, it's just it's probably spikes. I bet if I looked at it, it'd be a bunch of spikes. Anyway, adding water to that, it just makes those peaks lower, yeah. and then it tastes like a cheap whiskey. Yeah, you know, yep. I don't think it tastes cheap. I just think it's it just diminishes the profile that they would want you to have. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so they, take it from us, Lagavulin doesn't want you to add water to their Log Sixteen. Yeah, because <laughs> it diminishes. All right. The ninth and the final distillery that we will be trying, Lafroy. Opened in 1815, it sells one of one and a half times the amount of Lagavulin. Lafroy pro- produces their own malt sometimes, and also uses their own uh, uses malt from Port Ellen. So, yeah, it's hard to say that this isn't the entry point for Scotch because the Lafroy Select. Is like thirty to thirty five dollars. Well, for Isla, I would. You know? I, it's the entry point as far as price. Yeah, for price. That's what I mean. That's what people. But who, complexity. No, no, no. I'm only talking price. Okay. But only if you're talking, talking about because, like, because when you're at Total Wine and like or anywhere and you're like, I don't know what Scotch tastes like. Yeah. I'm gonna try something, and someone's like, "Hey, Lafroy is good," and you look at Lafroy, you're like, "Hey, that's the cheapest one." I I would say this is probably the most. Well, no, no. no. Factually, this is the most tried. Isla, I would say this is probably the biggest turnoff at the same point because sure, cause they try it's price. so They're intense like, yeah. and it's because like, oh, it's $36 or something and they purchase it and it's like, this is terrible. Mm-hmm. And then they go and get Johnny Walker black or something. Yeah. Or you get something completely different. Right. Yeah. But, but, and I guess to clear up where well, this is the 10, this is not the select. So no, this is like 40 bucks. Yeah. 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 Usually. So, but I mean, like, yeah. So and this is, it is the easiest entry point. It's it's probably the most... It, well, out of these, it's the most widely available, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, if you didn't know and you just picked this up, 
you're and if you're not ready, you're not gonna be. You're not gonna be in for a good. No, you're not gonna be in in for a good time. If you don't like what this brings to the table, they have a uh, how to pronounce it on the back. Mm-hmm. Spelled L A F R O Y G. The Frog. Yep. The Frog. Malta Scotch whiskey from the remote island of Isla in the Western Isles of Scotland. Isla. The Frog is a Gaelic word meaning the beauty hollow by the Board Bay. That's a long word. Did you notice Dylan turned on his reading voice for that one? Oh, yes. Turn Cork. on my reading voice. Cork pop. That's just, that's probably the best one so far. And that's mm. an open bottle. Like That's nice. only halfway. That's like less than half. Oh, no, that's about half. Smelling the bottle, I'm wondering if the smell is going to come through in a Glencairn. Okay. Don't put your dose in my bottle. Hey, you know what? We got another bottle of fried. I don't, or, just we're good. Trying. No, I know what I'm saying. It's like... But this is mine. I do. I the pers- nose doesn't come through. Smell that bottle. I personally really love Lafroig. And it's smelling Glen. You're totally right. It's weird. Yeah. It's gone. I can't describe it because it, it was a only, it was a one time thing. But I mean, it, honestly, <laughs> it's another gross comparison. If you smell the bottle. It smells like a dirty sock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. Ooh, God, it does but, smell like a dirty and then you smell the glass, and it doesn't smell like anything. Like a dirty sock. It's gone. It smells nothing like it's a deleted. dirty sock. So that's what we're talking oh, about. Oh, bacon. Oh, bacon. my goodness. It smells like grease. This is the yeah, first fat. one I get a meat off of. The nose. Yeah, I poured myself a lot more of this Lafroig because I really love Lafroig. <laughs> <laughs> the Lafroig boy. I am Lafroig boy. Wasn't I the first one to buy Lafroig out of us? The three of us? Yeah, and you over, overpaid. I way overpaid. Drastically. <laughs> but it was, so it was like 65 bucks, and I'm just like... <sighs> for what? For this? For 10. Oh, that was in, no. that was in Wisconsin. It was in Wisconsin. It was oh. that little liquor store right next to the car place. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, Lafroig, that looks really good. And, like, yeah. and you're just like, yeah. And yeah, I was like... <laughs> I'm gonna well, buy it. I, I did the same, almost the same price for this Balmore or Balmore, because it was sold out somewhere else. Right now it's cheaper, so I bought it more expensive somewhere else for the episode. Cause for, we had, yeah, for the episode. Had but it gotta, just gives me to. tingles in my head. It just feels good. It's like yes, yes, yes. It's so good. Hmm. This is a very the flavor comes in the after, like the yeah beyond the half yeah. This is the mm. only one where it's like elementy chemically. Yeah, it's so iodine. Iodine is the word. Yeah, um, the rest are not like that. And I, I always use the word medicinal for this, just because it smells like a hospital fire. You know, hospital fire. Because it's like rubber and chemicals and a little bit of sweetness. You know, this is it's. This it, used to be pretty. Like, this is not as good as the other times I've tried it. It's good for the money, but... I think that... it's because it's opened up. Like, if you... The first pour of this is probably better than the subsequent pour. But pours. so is Lagavulin. That yeah, Lagavulin has been true. with me... A long time. It, it, it's gone to Washington and all the way from, you know, Oregon, Mexico, Utah. It, this mm-hmm. this is the one that was with me on the trip. I'm surprised you put stickers on your cooler instead of stickers on the bottle. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> but, like... Yeah. This has the greatest opportunity of difference in flavor. The log. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the Lafroy is way different. It's very different. Yeah. I, I got to do it your guys' way. really like the Lafroy. I, I would say other than the Bullmore, the Lafroy right now for me is the most, for what I thought it was going to be, the most underwhelming mm-hmm. for what I set it up. Yeah. I don't I, I just did it your way. "Quote unquote," it's not good. It's actually not good at all. I like it my way better. <laughs> yeah, it's sweeter your way. Oh, that's gross, guys. Ah, it tastes like, it tastes like, like. It's like you. It's like you. Uh, it tastes like iodine. Well, yeah. I was say you scrubbed off all the like the sour, uh, whatever they put on Sour Patch Kids to make it sour, and you scraped all that off. And you put it in some like 
water you drink oh. it. like that's what i get when i put it all over my you know, tongue front of the tongue first wash it back the drop of water i added brought forward the rubber band-aid note the rubber yeah it's very band-aid-y hmm. we've spoken highly of this before why isn't it just it's just a comparison thing it, honestly like, it could be just because it's on the end maybe and it wasn't that was just the yeah. order the alphabetical order of it. Right? It's also just kind of a different. Yeah, I mean, Carter's, different. Carter's the Freud boy. He loves I this stuff. I'm the Freud boy. So oh. is this different than you remember it to be? No. The Freud boy. No. Not really. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's it's pretty much always what it tastes like. Yeah. But now having Kalila Kalomen, I'm like, man, that Kalomen is good. It's like. Dang. The, the, the Coloman is kind of the surprise in the bunch, isn't it's it? It's so good. It's like unnecessarily good. It's It's got such a good flavor to it, and yeah. it's not like... Yeah, it's different. It's different it's, flavor. Yeah, mm. it's different, but it's got enough of the same notes where I'm just like, wow, mm. that is, that is so, something I would drink all the time. So we're almost at two hours. I think we need to uh, rank our favorites. Should we do top three or top five? Let's do top four. Top four. Top okay. four. Split it in half. Yeah. Okay. If you want to start, Zach. Yeah, I was. I'm just quick. Quick thinking. It's log sixteen. Mm-hmm. Number, number one, because of nostalgia reasons. Unfortunately. Perfect. You got a dog in the background. It's it's log. It's Brucolati, classic laddie. And then it's Ardbeg. Okay. Ten year, and then it's Kiloman. Because okay. I find the Colila quite a bit, I guess it's not quite a bit different than the log, but somehow less enjoyable in many ways. Don't know why. Maybe I'll taste test that. Maybe that'll be one of my little personal <laughs> reviews, you know? Yeah. It'll be like, all right, guys, here we go. Colila log. What's the deal? <laughs> but, okay, that's my top four. So log, Brucolati, Ardbeg, Coloman. Okay. Carter? Ooh. it's kind of a hard one. He, this is the greatest potential for the Lafroig to not be in the top in the of top. the I Iowa, don't yeah. think it is. Oh, but you're Lafroig boy. I know. I really don't think it is. Don't forsake your own name. We need Griffin here. We got to get Griffin in here right now to defend this. Hey, but he likes Lafroig too much. Yeah, that's fine. We like Log too much. It's true. It's the same thing. It's I'm going to honestly, I'm going to go Coloman. Top one. one? Yeah. Wow. I was really good. That was good. the best? I was really good. Right. I really liked that. Okay. Okay. Ardbeg. Yep. Lafroig. Oh. <laughs> or not Lafroig. Um, Logwoolen. Okay. Okay. My bad. Logwoolen. Colilo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would yeah. I would probably say um, Logwoolen, Ardbeg, Colila, Coloman. Wow. Well, I think we got it. I think that's the conclusion. Yep. One, because I really have to use the bathroom because I have <laughs> half a gallon of water. Yep. But um, <laughs> the conclusion is try some Coloman. Yep. Uh, that was on all all of our top fours is Coloman. Coloman is slaps. Thank you for like, joining us on this really episode of the Whiskey House Pub House. Pub House. Yeah. Join us next time. Yeah.